as a council member to this, and do you plan on helping us address the racial discrimination issues here I'm, in town? Then I'm going to go home and check on the EIN situation. Six feet away, please. No, you got your shots already, right? You should be good. Don't worry. You're protecting all of us. So when do you plan on getting uh, anything done about the racial discrimination issues here going on? We keep reporting them, and council seems to be ignoring them. I haven't seen them. You haven't seen them? Oh, wait for the latest videos to come up. So just because we're speaking of this and doesn't mean they don't exist. You have so many people complaining. Hey, let's watch out. So many people are complaining about the same thing and you've done nothing. Uh, we'll have three minutes and we'll just go with a show of hands and give your name and address if you're comfortable with it. So we'll go with the first up. Yes, Ms. Bano. Are you going to offer a comment on the discussion items too? Or? I was. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Barbara Bano. Um, Mayor, I, I'll let them on. Um, just so you know, it's a bit unprecedented because they're under pseudonyms. What? Um, the one is no bullying whistleblower. <laughs> <clears throat> What's the word on that? It's up to the board. What was the question? Are we required to do that by if someone's not, not in person and they're... No, it's up to the board. So everybody think? has to give their name, correct? Well, they're not obligated to, but that's in person. They're obligated to give their name, no. Are they? But is it okay to give us a, a false name? And they're both under pseudonyms? There are two, yes. Hmm. Tell them to call back for their real name. All right, I'll tell you what. What do you all think? I say make them call back with their real name. They obviously did that intentionally. Yeah. Yep. We'll give them the public comment, but they have to uh, give us the name. If they call back, or do you want them to come on with and say their name? Whatever they want to do. Either way. <laughs> Change their name. If it gets out of hand, I'm gonna we're gonna cut them. Yes, because there are we are broadcast, so there are FCC regulations mm -hmm. as well. Hello, no bullying whistleblower. Are you there? Hi, this is Mr. Lee. Can you hear me? Yes. We're going to ask your name. I don't know why you're claiming me as no bullying anything when I put my actual email address in. Email address isn't a name. He just said it was Mr. Lee. It's Mr. Lee. I said my name. Okay. You seem to be the dense today, or you want to start some shit with me, too, like you did with Barry Rodriguez. Oh, there you go. That was FCC. You shut him down, David. That was quick. We'll get the FCC in contact with you. Profanity for the meeting. Well, he can't be bothered to be here, I suppose. The second one is Acura Amanda. Okay. Are you there, Acura Amanda? Hello, everyone. Acura Amanda here. I would like to talk about what Margaret Tuber addressed in council, calling me inaccurate, Amanda. But the only inaccurate one here is you, Ms. Tober. Ms. Tober defended a convicted sex offender who was hired by the Gabber soon after his release from prison. Tober also believes the council did not intentionally racially discriminate Amanda Acura, against citizens this is supposed by to be multiple... addressed to the this is supposed to be addressed to the council not a conflict that you might have with a resident why was she allowed to personally attack me sir miss tober are you there i'm here hi good evening it's margaret tober and um uh, mayor i just wanted to comment on um your comments a couple of weeks ago and you know i been coming to council or following council meetings for about 20 years and um, I think one time I lost my stuff and that wasn't all that long ago and it's certainly not something that I'm going to be bragging about but I have to say mayor I think most people wholeheartedly agreed with what you were saying and uh, I personally am tired of um, the not so accurate Amanda's and Mr. Rodriguez and Mr. Lee and Mr. Wally Waterkeeper from a few years ago, um, just spreading information that isn't true. I don't think there's a person on that dais that would ever intentionally discriminate based on race, religion, gender, et cetera. And you guys didn't you say anything about it. Yes, she did. 
Yeah. Is that your, is that her real name? No. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, Hello, everyone. It's Acura Amanda here. So back to what I was saying. Um, she shouldn't no. be allowed. If I allowed. may. We're not doing that. Miss Tolbert. I apologize. She should not be allowed to disparage your resident. Sorry, David. You have to shut that down. Because of this right here, I'd like to ask counsel right now. We're ready to go back to public comment in person? Yes. Yes. Oh, I, I mean, I still think we should take it by Zoom because there's still people who aren't willing to come to the meeting because clearly you can shut them down and they should give their names. I think that's perfectly appropriate. Counsel, yeah, what do you it's think? It's not. I, it's the first time this yeah, it's has the first happened. Time it's happened. They need to address us yes. about us and not disparage a and resident. And attack a resident. Yeah. And no, that, that was unacceptable. Yeah, that, agreed. It, Actually, if you look at the rules, they're not even addressing us. They're supposed to address the chair only and no one else but the chair. Right. It's just not right. I'm, it's so hurtful. Mayor, may I just say something about her comments about the sex offender? No, because I can't bring you back up for a second time at public comment. Okay, that's fine. We're not concerned with what she had to say. So, You know, you guys, you guys do a lot up there and you put up with a lot. And since we've heard um, that conversation three years ago, I'm about to propose that we also increase that base salary right now because here's, and this is not a knock against anyone who ever served on this council, but the volume of emails that we receive now is unbelievable. The response and the things that we have to deal with from a social media perspective, uh, the fact that we have to deal with, you know, hack bloggers or YouTube artists that fancy themselves journalists, um, the stress that it puts your family through. Um, and I'm not even talking about the campaign angle. I'm talking about the things that people say and get out, put out there in the public. These are things that are fairly new. In fact, it wasn't even that big a deal when we had this discussion four years ago, five years ago. Four years ago. Four years ago. Um, and uh, the fact that um, in the last couple of weeks, I received a death threat that the FBI felt was credible enough that they did a face-to-face -face investigation on. So this is certainly not something that I think any of us thought would be a part of local government and certainly adding money to our paycheck isn't going to solve that problem. But there, I think there needs to be a better base rate for having to put up with this stuff for, you know, our daughters, wives, mother-in-laws, whoever it is uh, to you and your family, having to feel like they got to look over their shoulder and having to wonder if somebody's pulling a phone out of their pocket to just get another impromptu video to make you look like an idiot or if they're pulling a gun out because somebody decided to uh, call for your execution on a social media platform. Right. So because of that, what I'm proposing is that we go with a $28,000 salary uh, stipend, not changing the way we get paid for uh, the mayor's position, or I'm sorry, twenty eight five dollars for mayor and $23,000 for council, which breaks down roughly to $800 per biweekly pay for council after the basic FICA and Medicare reduction. Of course, that changes depending on what you've, how you've got your particular one set up, uh, and one thousand per two week period for the mayor's seat. With the ways that people have to get at you, and the the fact that there's just a general loss of common sense, decency, decorum, Kindness. reality, honesty is just disappeared. The job itself, when the job itself becomes about twenty percent of the stress of the job, there's a problem. So. That's what I'm proposing. Um, I would hope that everybody up here would, would feel that that's reasonable. I would hope that the people who live in this city would feel that that's reasonable when we're talking about an amount that comes out around $115,000, $120,000 for the year for all five of us. And, and we're, I think we're worth it. We're See what you have to go through in order to campaign to get it and the ridiculous amount of nonsense that comes with it that is new just in the last few years. All this stuff up at the national level has just gotten contagious. And when you're sitting in a council seat in Gulfport, Florida, with 12,500 people living here, and there's death threats being issued on a national level, people are trying to rile up uh, people that have never even heard of Gulfport, Florida, against people out of context. It is a ridiculous amount of nonsense. And to me, that's the reason. That's the stressor and we're of this job. wanding people at the door. We're Which putting I don't like doing that either. And I can tell you I don't like having yeah. a loaded gun in my house either. We're putting Just barricades up. Just because I'm a lefty up. doesn't mean I didn't grow up in western North Carolina and don't know how to shoot one. So. <laughs> We're putting barricades up in front of the door so a car doesn't drive through. It's it's scary. Yeah, it's, it's, scary. A, it's a different climate. And frankly, uh, it's one that I think uh, 
you're not compensated well enough to put up with that level of stuff. As far as I'm concerned, this job is not what it was 13 years ago. Mm -mm. It's not what it was five years ago. None of these jobs. Yeah. So anyway, I, I, that's my, I that's what I say, got I mean, there. First of all, I don't think, I don't see the correlation between making more money is going to make those problems go away. They're going to harass us if we made $200,000 a year. You're going to, but I really don't think that increasing it to 20000 is going to make the job more palatable or, uh, or, or, or we're going to get less people oh, it's not going to sticking our cameras in their faces. Okay. All right. So, Margaret, you can do your original open public comment if you'd like. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor, because I was kind of surprised in the past you've always been so gracious about allowing um, public input. So nevertheless, what I wanted to say was in 2005, I worked for a local company, and the majority of the people that worked for me were black. Uh, on my way to work one day, I was stopped by a Gulfport police officer and to tell me that my uh, brake light wasn't working. He was very kind, you know, and told me to go get it fixed and let him know, whatever the procedure was. I got to work late. I had a staff meeting scheduled, and um, I told the employees what happened and apologized for being late, and I said, you know, the police officer was so nice. The majority of those employees were black, and their commentary to me has stayed with me for all these years. It broke my heart, and I was mortified, and what they told me was, Margaret, that would never happen to us when we go through Gulfport. And one by one, those people told me various stories of racial profiling, of how they had been treated, and so forth. I was mortified that I was naive to that. What I want to say is that I know today, in this year, that if those people, that if that situation happened again and I went to work late, those people would not be telling me that story. So I'm very grateful to Chief Rob Vincent, to the leadership of Gulfport, for the police department that we have in place today. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Here is a copy for the record. All right. I'm like Elton John. I'm still standing. I'm standing up for me, for my family, for my city, and for my neighbors. I believe you may have mistaken my kindness for weakness. Never in the history of Gulfport has there ever been such a nasty, nasty, hate-filled campaign. It's very sad to know that we have folks among us who are willing to stop at nothing to win. So as, my, as we work through this personal crucifixion on my family, my husband and I decided we would hold our heads up, stick out our chest, and carry on because we know we are good, honest, giving people. We have given this town our lives. For me, more than 30 years, for my husband, much longer. We don't ask for anything in return, and we don't do it to feed our ego. We do, it for, we do things for others that you don't even know about. Um, where were you when we were answering fire calls at 3 o'clock in the morning, or when I was camping with the Girl Scouts, or earning a certificate for 1,000 hours of volunteering? or frying mullet for the museum fundraiser. Where were you? Our reputation and our integrity are strong, unbreakable. The record proves it. We have never, ever been unkind or disrespectful to anyone in this city. The blogger that wrote the political hit piece about my family is known to do anything for money. Read up on him in the Tampa Bay Times. The paid political hit piece came out just in time for mail-out ballots. What a coincidence. Um, that was how it was designed, and I got several calls from people in our community telling me who paid for that political hit piece. Dr. Bauer, you asked your friends for dirt on me. You couldn't find any because there is nothing. A decision was made to fabricate a story about my family. Your actions show you are complicit. What will your next move be? Do you have what it takes to do the right thing? Or are you feeling proud and comfortable with the destruction that was done to advance your name? You have the power to end this with the truth. The question is, do you have the integrity? Playing games with people's lives, this horrific paid for hit piece is what drives people to suicide and you did it anyway. You knew it could affect my 28 year impeccable career as a school teacher and you did it anyway. You knew you could destroy a family, 
human lives and you did it anyway. Did you intend for somebody to follow my husband around and take pictures of him? Because that's happening. Did you intend for somebody to, to be quoted saying, let's go over to their house? That same person planned to confront my husband and his son. His son is mentally handicapped, physically handicapped, and has a brain disease that's going to kill him. Is it fair game to you to attack the elderly, the mentally handicapped, the physically handicapped, and the dying? I was forced to install cameras at my house. Who's going to pay for that? You will fix this. You'll fix what you did to me. You own it. It was your campaign. Councilwoman Thanos, you used city resources to share this paid political hit I piece. I did not do that. Don't interrupt me. <laughs> paid political hit piece through your city email account with constituents. I gave you a ride home from the tree planting. For the love of God, were you stabbing my husband in the back on the way? Excuse me, but I think I need to respond to this. Christine, I did not use city email. I BCC'd things that I sent from my own meal, email to the city because Sam had made so many nasty comments on his rant that I was responding, and I sent it to, to Andy and to others so that the city would have a record of it. You've never I, seen me rant. Well, <laughs> anyway, but, but, but I did not send those from my city email. The only person I responded to on city email was Yolanda, and she had written to me and knew really? all about that thing. So that was not true. And It's and, in the public record. I, I, I understand, and I'm telling you that we went through the public record. I went with, through it with Dave. It's not in my sent emails. They were BCC'd from my regular email to the city so that there would be a record because it was a city issue because of what Sam had brought up, and people were asking me about the issue. You said, here's the link. Yes. And then sent it to That's the right. residents. That's right. But I sent it from my personal email and only BCC'd the city. I didn't send it from my city email. It doesn't matter. Well, it does to me because you're lying about what I did. And, you know, I sent to people because Sam brought it up and because people were asking me, what's this article? What's going on? So I sent it to a couple to of people. I did, not, I did not initiate this. I did not pay for this. I didn't do any of that stuff. So, you know, I, I don't know. Day. I can't speak for Mike Bauer. He'll have to speak for himself. I have not asked anybody to run against Paul Ray. That's not what I was told. Well, I'm sorry. I, I haven't done it. Done anything to stop it. Never. I haven't done anything, period, about his election. It's a year away. I haven't done a single thing about his election. So sometimes people are telling you guys stuff that isn't true. Uh, I'm Karen Love. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I wish I was up here talking about all the great fun events coming up like I usually do. But in, instead tonight, I want to talk about some stuff that has me very discouraged. Hmm. In the last 24 to 48 hours, we've had an extreme number of negative posts on social media. Hmm. The city has been called racist, anti-Semitic, gay bashers, I'm caring to the homeless and mentally ill and full of dirty politicians. I know that there are some folks who might fit some of these descriptions, but I also know that these words do not match the city that I live in and love. Administrators of social pages can do their part by deleting or calling out false information. Readers can do their part by not responding to this stuff. We must all stop with all this name calling. I believe that the city council and the city manager must address some of these issues from the dais. To remind council that city hall is public property where all citizens must be able to conduct their personal business. Uh, all citizens, uh, excuse me, uh, citizens have been uh, trespassed from City Hall property in the past. And I understand some of the issues involved. Uh, however, I believe a higher bar is required to trespass a citizen from the public building of City Hall. My name is Ray Rodriguez, and I'm here uh, for the meeting that we have scheduled. And my question for the city is, 
who investigates discrimination within the city of Gulfport? Okay. And are they asleep at the wheel? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anyone else for open public comment? And I never knew Mr. O'Reilly was our human rights officer. And when I spoke earlier asking who was the human rights officer, I had no idea that he was the one. He's also received information about discrim gender discrimination at Boca Ciega Yacht Club. What I've been doing is trying to get uh, through illegal avenues, freedom of information and sunshine law requests. Okay. Mr. Camp, can you hear us? Yes, I can. <clears throat> Mayor, City Council, thank you everybody. David Cantor, 5709 16th Avenue South. Now, I've had a lot of conversations with each of y'all, probably the least with Ms. Thanos, about the ongoing challenges of, of the behavior of the Boca Ciega Yacht Club in our community over the last year. So I know that there's a lot of things that have been forgotten all, along the way, so I'm going to recap some of that for you. Any white person of good character over 18 years of age shall be eligible for membership in the Boca Ciega Yacht Club, Inc. Now, my wife and I joined Boca Ciega Yacht Club last year because we had heard, much as they said in that initial introdu introductory letter, that they were the friendliest sailing club in all of Florida. That was the point. Gulfport was always the dream as a multi-generational campaignian who constantly got pushed farther inland. Moving to Gulfport was always the dream, and it took me traveling around the world to get here. When I got here, I expected that we would live up to the character of our community. Yes, my name is Ray Rodriguez, and uh, I've been working with uh, Activism News Network, an investigative branch investigating BCYC, Beyond Criminal Yacht Club, and the city of Gulfport in their activities. Now. One thing, I want to bring a couple of numbers to, to bear in our investigation. $2,700,000 is the amount of money that BCYC, Beyond Criminal Yacht Club, has generated in their 13-year lease while they were renting a city property, a prime piece of property, 6000 The Actually, the nicest piece of property the city of Gulfport has, they were supposed to be renting it, and they never paid the city of Gulfport a single, a single dollar in the 13 years that they were renting that property from us. And in that time that they never paid us a dollar, the city of Gulfport, they have in the 13 years amassed $2,700,000 in cash and revenues over the 13 year lease. And this is what is being covered up and protected by Mr. O'Reilly and Tony Angel. These two individuals do not want the financials involving Boca Ciega Yacht Club brought forward towards the residents of Gulfport. Because when we see the financials of the 13 years that they've been making payments to the city of Gulf, that they have not been making payments, they have collected one million in a criminal slush fund account. And this criminal slush fund account has never been accounted for, has never been atoned for, and if we see the financials that Mr. Salzman and Mr. O'Reilly are withholding from the residents of Gulfport, along with the controllers of this Raymond James asset account at BCYC, it's Beyond Criminal Yacht Club. And with this club generating $2.7 million in cash and revenues, completely hidden from the members of Boca Ciega Yacht Club, the the uh, board of Boca Ciega Yacht Club and the city general that this club, a prime piece of property. Now you could have a group of baboons running this 6,000 feet of waterfront property and amass some income. 6,000 feet of waterfront property is what Boca Ciega Yacht Club has been controlling and keeping from the children, the residents, any black person, Jewish people, because we are defending their ability to not abide by the Americans with Disability Act. And if I remember correctly, that was a law passed to protect the most vulnerable Americans, the Americans with Disability Act, and that is not accepted or honored in Boca Ciega Yacht Club. Or the Thank city. you, sir. Thank you very much. Jim Crow lives in Gulfport, Florida. You forgot your phone.
I do need my phone. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm not sure if you'll need it. And if I can get my sunshine law request answered, we can get some. Mr. Rodriguez, you started. had your three. Thank you. All right, anyone else for public comment? <laughs> yes. yes, my name is Ray Rodriguez. I've spoke up here a number of times about Boca Ciega Yacht Club. And again, I want to keep speaking about the lawsuit involving Boca Ciega Yacht Club and Samantha Ring. There's a second lawsuit that it also involves Boca Ciega, I'm sorry, involves Samantha Ring and the city of Gulfport. So Samantha Ring has two lawsuits, one against the Boca Ciega Yacht Club. Now, what Boca Ciega Yacht Club has stood up and defended... Uh, is that they have the right to discriminate against Americans with disability. Let me say that again. Boca Ciega Yacht Club says they have a right to discriminate against handicapped people on their property. And what I've read through the Samantha Ring versus the city of Gulfport, at the city attorneys, who I have asked a number of times, is who's directing these city attorneys in this lawsuit, Samantha Ring versus the city of Gulfport of Florida. Now, Mr. Salzman says it's all secret information as far as the lawsuit involved, that he's not going to share any information with the residents of Gulfport when it comes to the lawsuit involving Samantha Ring and the city of Gulfport. What I would like to point out is what our city attorneys have done. Samantha Ring made a claim of discrimination. And what's happened is there's been 11 attorneys now that have attacked Samantha Ring since she stood up and said that I am being discriminated against by Boca Ciega Yacht Club at my Americans with Disability. The city is, is protecting her in this fight also. Now what I have is multiple communications over and over and over between the city of Gulfport and Boca Ciega Yacht Club supporting the city's defense of the Yacht Club's ability to defend against discrimination. So what I understand is that Jim Crow lives at Boca Ciega Yacht Club and will discriminate against anybody that, that they care to. What Boca Ciega Yacht Club is standing up is saying, they won one case at the district court in, in Tampa, and the court said, yes, they have the right to discriminate against Americans with disability. This was in Tampa. A judge said, Boca Ciega Yacht Club can discriminate against Americans with disability. In fact, with that decision, they can then enforce the rest of their discriminatory practices against anybody they wish. And their Articles of Incorporation, the Articles of Incorporation for Boca Ciega Yacht Club say you must be 18 years old and white to be a member of Boca Ciega Yacht Club. Look in the lawsuit filed with the city. Now, my problem is trying to get information from my city about this private lawsuit that Mr. Salzman won't share. I've also unearthed a criminal slush fund operating out of Boca Ciega Yacht Club in excess of over a million dollars. If I can get my Sunshine Law request answered, you, I can con finish Thank an investigation. Much. Thank you. Discrimination in Florida. Jim Crow lives Gulfport, Florida. Thanks, Thank Mr. Rodriguez. Yes, sir. Mr. Lee. So, again, this and I am still complaining about in this and the racial discrimination this and that's being done in this and by Mike Burry City. How interesting to this, and that when I decide I want to complain and make it a factor to this, and I then decided to essentially get banned from my own Burberry City Hall descent indefinitely. So you guys just like to hide stuff. You don't like in the descent to make any attempts in the sense to resolve any issues whatsoever. It's clear to this and that you guys are allowing this and for this racial discrimination to happen here at town, seeing how any single time it's a white person, you don't see them. I'm a little confused as to how we manage to have, and this and God knows how many ice cream trucks here in town. For how many years, and not one of you has ever seen it. Not one ticket, not one citation, absolutely nothing. But then when I make a complaint about it, it is that I'm being retaliated against. And this, and because I want to do exactly the same thing you're allowing your white people to do. But it seems missing that your white laws and so only apply to white people. Why can't I break those very laws and so that your people are doing? You're the ones that invented it. I'm just a little confused and as to how exactly it's in you invent these laws and so, but yet you can't apply them and send directly to the very up to every people, to every single race. That we had yet again, and it's in another food truck, and it's in that miraculously showed up and it's in the middle of downtown. Balloons, live jazz, closed down two city parking structures, pink, I mean, the, just bright tents. You name it to this end again, no, not one officer saw it. 
city manager apparently says he's never seen any of it. So again, it's a while they continue to keep violating, they don't get tickets, citations, you continue to keep sending people to harass me. At every single point, you continue to keep sending people out and it's gonna give me tickets. So let me know and it's in exactly what's occurring here because you're holding up and it's in this entire thing that's about this whole black heritage month thing, but I'm a little confused. Why is everyone being redlined? It's the only one Pacific side of town. Why is there not one black owned business here in downtown, not one black church, not one black person to this end at all in a position of power among any of your libraries? None of it. Who do I get to talk to you to this end when I need to make a complaint in this and about something that's going on with me? But apparently if I talk talking with my hands into this and it's too ethnic for you guys to handle. It's aggressive. But when I decide to call up and have a conversation about it, I'm immediately hung up and I'm immediately trespassing them from your city hall. So what next? How many more buildings will you be trespassing before this and because I'm Latino? I'm just confused because I want to actually file complaints and some about the racial discrimination issues here that you guys are perfectly aware of. And the fact that you're turning a blind eye to it is beyond me. So please, please, wasn't it your very husband is that got quoted on an article? Come out, there's a difference between the word N and black folks. I I'm believe you read the full article. Even up here. Personally. Feel free to continue three minutes. Okay, well, it's done. Well, what I was going to say is, Mr. Lee, until you just identified yourself as as identifying Latino, oh, no, 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 I would have no, never, no. I would have never known that. Known that. The don't reason, don't get to figure it into the reason that you've been trespassed from properties is because, because you didn't follow the rules, no, you and because you were disrespectful to other people. You came up with three reasons have a seat. To you're, you're all done. You had your three minutes. You have to change your mind on it. So one reason and stick with it. And you still haven't addressed and said what you're going to do with the race discrimination. You want to stay in the meeting or do you want to go? What you're going to do with the race discrimination. 